Thank you. Thank you for joining the lesson. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I can see you are ready. Remember to share the lesson with a friend. Remember to invite a friend. Right away, I'm inviting a friend. Do the same from that side. Invite somebody so that you may learn together. Invite a friend, invite a friend. Thank you. I can see you are coming in. Today we'll be discussing uh, <clears throat> mathematics paper one, actually a continuation of what we had last night. Yeah, I can see people are already quoting their schools here and introducing themselves. Continue with the same. Remember to be having a writing material. Mm -hmm. Mohammed from McBee. I recognize you, young man, from Achako School. Thank you so much. Together with everybody else who is following us. So let me directly go to the paper that we were doing yesterday. There are even some questions that uh, we did not conclude because of uh, some network issues. But I hope today it shall be smooth. <laughs> Yeah, so we are on the paper now. We did everything up to number nine. But in the midst of number 10, something went wrong with my network. So let's proceed from number 10 now. It's a question on uh, indices. Solve for x in the equation. We have a uh, nine. Then uh, in brackets, we have two. Power two x plus two. Minus 41. Then uh, two power x plus eight equals to zero. I said we apply the laws of indices. Remember there is a law which says uh, in case you have a number, let's say A raised to power M, multiplied by the same number or the same base raised to a different index, we just take the number, then we add the powers. So this is what we shall apply in the first term. Uh, according to this, we have 9. Then instead of 2 power 2x and again power 2, we can just have it as 2 power 2x multiplied by 2 power 2. Then minus 41, 2 power x. This one plus 8 equals to 0. At that point, at this point, we can talk about uh, 2 power 2 is a 4. Then there is 9 here. So that becomes 36. 2 power 2x minus 41 power uh, x power 2 plus 8 equivalent to 0 equivalent to zero at that point allow me apply the what you call the product law of indices we usually say <clears throat> in case you have a let's say a power m then everything is raised to power n this is simply by we solve this one by taking a then the powers are multiplied now in that order it means at this point now reversing that law we will be having 36. Then we will have 2 power x having raised to power 2. Then minus 41, 2 power x plus 8 being equal to 0. Then with this now, we can let... 2 raised to x be something like t, a certain unknown. So that now we will have 36 t power 2, then minus 41 t plus 8 equivalent to 0. Now the equation is quadratic and we can solve 
the quadratic equation. Remember, there are very many methods of solving a quadratic equation. We can even prefer solving this quadratic equation by there is the completing square method, factorization method. And we also have the quadratic formula, which is because we are solving for t, the value of t will be given by negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Then we shall divide everything by 2 multiplied by a. So when we apply now, we will start by taking b, which is 41. So negative b, which is already negative 41, then plus or minus the square root of, uh, we square 41 now. So 41 squared minus 4 multiplied by a. You can see a is uh, 36, then c is 8. So 36 and 8. 36 times 8. Then we divide everything by 2 multiplied by a, and a is a 36. So 2 by 36. Now I can apply my calculator there. Remember, I should start by having 41 plus or minus 41 squared. Then I subtract 4 multiplied by 36 and 8. This is giving 529. So I need the square root of 529 out of, um, this is 72. So the square root of 529 becomes exactly 23. So it means I'll be having 41 plus or minus 23, then divided by 72, which means the first value of t, the first value of t is going to be, when I take 41 and I add 23, then I divide by 72. This is giving me 8 over 9. Or the value of t can be, when I take 41 and I subtract 23, then I divide by 72. This is giving me exactly a quarter. So t can either be 8 over 9 or t can be a quarter. I can see you guys are coming in powerfully. Remember to invite someone. Remember to... Okay, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, this is good. I can see Machako School turning up so well. Mangu High School, wonderful. Another great day representing Concord Boys High School. Wonderful. 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 This is great. Continue introducing yourself and continue learning something. Click this link. Make sure you share with a friend. Make sure that a friend is invited. You can also subscribe. If you have never subscribed to this platform, please do so tonight. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. We have the value of t, but remember, 2 power x is what had been let to be t. Therefore, with that information now, we can solve for t and say 2 power x equals to a quarter. 2 power x can be a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, a quarter. Quarter. Let me play along with this one so that I may first get the first value of x. So this shall be a 2 raised to x equals to, we can make this one half squared. A half squared, which means we can apply the law of indices and now say that uh, 2 power x is the same as we can apply uh, the reciprocal law of indices, in which case we shall have half becoming 2, but now the power which was positive now becomes negative. Which was positive now becomes negative. 
and because 2 is raised to x and 2 is raised to negative 2, now we can say that the value of x equals to negative 2. That is the first value of x. There is also another possible value of x whereby you can see 2 power x equals to 8 out of 9. In such a case now, you'll be required to apply logarithms and you come up with the value of x. In simpler terms, this is what I'm saying. I want to wind up with the question. So to finish up with this, I'll be talking about uh, taking 2x, 2 raised to x to be equal to 8 out of 9. Because this one cannot be put to base 2, we can just say that uh, we can introduce logs. The log of 2 power x equals to the log of 8 out of 9. In such a case, x log 2 will be equal to the logarithm of 8 over 9. And in such case, the value of x can be obtained by, we say, the log of 8 over 9 divided by the log of 2. This is exactly negative 0. Point. Negative 0. Point 0.1699. So this is a possible value of x, and negative 2 is also a possible value of x. Continue subscribing. Continue inviting friends. Continue following. Let's look at uh, number 11, another technical question whereby students must be very careful. In the figure below, triangle ABC prime is the image of triangle ABC under a rotation. So the examiner has specified that this is a rotation. By construction, determine the angle and center a plain paper. If it was on a graph, we can identify a specific center. So what we can identify here is only the angle. The center will just be shown, but we can't read the coordinates of the center since there is no Cartesian plane where the two triangles are. So what you do, if it is a, a point and its image, let's say point A and A prime. You just join A and A prime. A and A prime. Then you bisect perpendicularly. You bisect perpendicularly A and A prime. Sector. Remember, I've not measured that angle. I'm just estimating. After perpendicular bisector of A prime, you join again either C and C prime or B and B prime, and you also bisect. So when I connect B and B prime, I will also bisect the angle joining them. I bisect the line. So after that line, I bisect it. So I draw the bisector now to this line perpendicularly. I can see now the points, the lines are meeting somewhere. The bisectors can meet somewhere at least. So wherever the bisectors are meeting, that becomes our center. That becomes our center of rotation. So the center of rotation has been identified. After identifying the center of rotation, the other thing now is to get the angle of rotation. For us to get the angle of rotation, we are supposed to connect each coordinate to the center. Each coordinate to the center. For example, I can coordinate, I can bring A to the center. A to the center. Mm -hmm. Then also A prime to the center. A prime to the center, like that. Then after joining A prime and A to the center, I measure the anchor. I measure the anchor like that. That is the anchor. Therefore, mine now is to ask from A to A prime. Am I moving to the clockwise or to the anticlockwise? And according to how I have connected each point to the center, then now I determine the turn. 
it is a clockwise one. The turn is clockwise. The turn is uh, clockwise. So it means if I measure this angle, let's say, for example, it is a 60. The angle is going to be negative 60 because it is in the clockwise direction. Negative 60, and the center is here, center A, B. So that is the center which has already been uh, identified. That is the center. That is the center. Okay. So we have known the center, uh, the, the angle that is. Remember, the angle of rotation cannot be mentioned without uh, the sign behind it, of which the sign is to show the sign is to show direction. If it was uh, in the anti-clockwise direction, we would have used a positive. Let me check the people I have in the today's class. This is great. This is great. I'm checking uh, your comments. Remember to invite a friend. Remember to invite a friend today. Remember to invite a friend tonight. Remember to invite a friend tonight. Let me check what you are saying. Okay, okay. The screen is not posted. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody says the screen is not posted. I believe, uh, I hope it's now clear. I hope you can now see the screen. I hope I hope the screen can be seen now. I'm working on the screen, just a minute, just a minute. I'm trying to bring the screen. Trying to post the screen. Give me a minute, I'm getting back live. I'm getting back live. I'm getting back live. Just a minute, I want to see what the issue might be. 